do. I've never played Final Doom. But, oh, I, unless you're asking about Bloodstained, in which case, yes, I've beaten this game, uh, I've played through this game, like, eight, I think eight times? But there's still more stuff that I want to do. Alright. Alright, so here we go. Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon. If you haven't seen this game, it's to it's totally sweet. Uh I'm thinking that what I would like to do. Oh, sounds good, knives. Enjoy. What I would like to do in Bloodstained is um beat the game with a single ally. Because if you remember, when I murdered uh um, Miriam, there was a sign that said, like, if only I knew, if only I could have one ally or something, you know, was, was what he was saying. And so, maybe we should play through with one ally. Oh, I also never beat Boss Rush. Maybe we should try playing through with one ally, you know? I guess we'll just delete file 8. So we'll play on ultimate. And, uh, yeah. So my goal is to take Miriam with me and then murder the other two. Have the one true ally. See what it, uh, you know, see what it says. See what kind of ending I get there. Whee! Alright, so I gotta remember, we've got all the special stuff. We've got the, uh... We've got the charge. We've got the double jump. We've got it all. Oh, right, I gotta remember I can also charge. Yeah! So that must have been some other way to go. Some way that I don't think I've seen before. Uh-oh! Rats, man. So yeah, I'm not sure if the uh, the one ally thing will do anything. Who knows? It was hinted at though. If only I could find one ally. He said something like that. One person I could trust. Ah! Man, this music is good. I don't... I... I feel like I tend to not talk very much when I play this game. And part of it is just because this game sounds so good. The sound effects and the music and stuff. I just want to listen to it. Oh! Yeah, yeah! Thanks again, Flex.
All right, let's go. Whoops. Oh, that charge is way, way longer. With this Crescent Strike, you can just sit here and just blast him. One of these days, I'll beat Boss Rush also. I wonder what the actual resolution of this game is, because it... It's not 19 by... It's not 16 by 9 aspect ratio, it looks like. Oh, I do want to take Miriam with me. Alright, so she has become an ally. Which is good, because that means I can... This will get me, like, every single one of the, um... Uh, this will get me, like, every one of the stat upgrades. Of all of the allies to take with me, I think she's the best. Probably then Alfred and then Gebel. Which I guess is Jeebil? Jeebel? I don't know. That's what they say in the trailer, but it sounds stupid. Also, she's like totally the best right here because these guys are so big. I don't want to get hit by their big skirts. So I need some range. I guess I could just jump at him. Look at the reflection of the moon in the water back there. That looks sweet. Oh, jeez. Hey, I just realized something. On this part, you can probably just be Miriam and do that. That's cool. I see. If the underwater thing has eyes, it's gonna jump at you. Neat. I knew at that time and still wasn't sure how to actually deal with it. That was risky. Things sure are easier with Miriam around. She's got the range to deal with these spear guys. It's just great. Mustache Mountain? I've never heard of that. Whoops, oh geez. Hmm. 
on! Yeah! Okay. We're gonna have to be Miriam here. Gotta go something like, Hua! like this. Uh oh. I hope that's not too far. It's not. Okay. Uh oh. Bah. Oh, right. You have to jump right there. Oops. Be careful here. Try to use my sub weapon to pop these bubbles. Oh, he moves so weirdly. I should have uh, slid right there. Switched to Zangetsu for the extra damage here. And we got him. Ah, that's so hard to dodge. Alright, so yeah, what happens when you save Miriam, but now we destroy Alfred? Yes! I don't know if we actually need to destroy them or if we should just leave them behind. I probably should have just left them behind. I mean, I can already double jump. Now I feel like I fucked up. Oh my gosh. I- these fucking cats. Okay. Ah, jeez. Um, no, I think the only thing- I don't know- I don't actually know when I got charged slash. I think that was, um... I think that was maybe when I got the true ending or something that I unlocked that. I think what Alfred's soul gives you is double jump, but because I'm playing on ultimate mode, which you unlock by doing the kill everybody, uh, I already have those abilities. Which is why I was thinking that, like, maybe I fucked up and I actually should have just left him alive. Like, not taking him with me, because that's the idea here, is that I'm going only with Miriam, but that doesn't mean I have to kill the others. Maybe I could have just left them be, but we'll see, you know?
Alright, my Zangetsu is almost dead. This song's got some sweet double bass action in it. Okay. Oh, I don't know if I told you guys this, but... Ugh! At TwitchCon, I'm gonna be, uh... I, uh, got a hotel with Obst. So me and Obst are, are uh, are TwitchCon rooming together. I'm excited. That's good to hear. I haven't seen... Oh, I should have taken that with Zangetsu. Oh, well. Oh, we can do this. There we go. That makes up for it. Yeah, I mean, I know you don't really like to travel, really. I didn't think it was something that you would like to go to. Did it. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm most excited about is just meeting people. And I gotta rem I gotta try to remember that they're there to meet people, basically. And so um, I can't be so nervous about talking to people. <clears throat> I'm always very nervous about talking to people. Basically, what it is is, I can talk to people, I just don't- Oh, yeah! Jin 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 Boom 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 La da da uh, anyway, what I was saying is, I can talk to people, I just don't know how to approach people. That's really my issue. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. 
Wait a second, you can get this guy through here with the whip. I love that you can change directions with the, uh, with the double jump. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, you can actually just make that jump. Oh, I forgot about the dash. I totally forgot about it. We could have been cruising. Except for we're in. Oh god, it's frog room. It's frog room number one. Scyther. Scyther. Scyther's a pretty cool Pokemon. It's one of those Pokemon where I feel like they knew how cool it was when they were making it, you know? Like, they had to have set out specifically to make a really cool Pokemon when they when they designed that one. That's true, bug Pokemon in general are cool. Oh, shit. Yeah. Have you seen the thing about how, like, like, has it ever been pointed out to you, or maybe have you noticed that, um, what is it? It's like Caterpie looks way more like Venomoth or something. It's like it really look if you look at the certain design elements of the Pokemon, it really looks like Caterpie was supposed to evolve into Venomoth. And that Maybe it, it, it might it might be different Pokemon that this is true about that than I'm saying. Cause it doesn't really make sense that a that a caterpillar would become a moth and not a butterfly. Maybe it wasn't I don't know. I don't know exactly what the deal was with it, but there there was just like a... I, I just saw a, like, comparison picture once about one Pokemon. About two Pokemon and their evolution forms and how it looks like they should actually be flipped around. Whoops. Miriam, you jumped too high for this part. Okay. I know, it's... it's... That's the best track. Alright, here we go. Yeah.
That's like such a tight jump to get over the flame, but in front of that second ball. Oops. Uh oh. I think I want to blow up the first bubble, jump over the second. Oh, wait a second. If you blow them up in his mouth, they don't even take time blowing up? Okay. All right, well, I got to really not fuck this up now. Oops. Oh my gosh, that was too close. Got him! One in, uh, Miriam only, first try. Yeah! So I didn't have to respawn, didn't have to use a life. These things take two hits. Okay, so we have to go... We can't follow the skeleton there. Ooh, this will be good, though. Yeah, yeah. Oops. <laughs> Let's go. Oop. I love the, the triple knife sub-weapon. Oh, these dudes are just coming out at just the wrong intervals. Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. Leave me alone. I, I don't know what the meaning is of, like, there's pro I don't know if there's any meaning to it, but like this guy who's in like sometimes sometimes it's like green guy, but this guy's like gold guy, and he's wearing a little pope hat. Maybe that's like a checkpoint or something. See, like this is regular green guy. Again, forgetting about the the dash. Those things look pretty cool. 
They look like a regular kind of like mimic type enemy, but fight a bunch of them. Oh, I gotta be hitting purples with uh, Zangetsu since my favorite weapon with him is the is the whip. There it is. And the one up we can get now with double jump? Yeah! Oh yeah, with Miriam you can just go under that dude. The dash made me jump too far there. And I jumped into the dude and got castlevania would back. Ah, this is one I can't get. Unless, I wonder if you can jump with Miriam and then double jump with Zangetsu if you switch characters in the air. We could maybe get that, if, if that's a possibility. Otherwise, we need what's-his-face. Wait a second. There we go. I was gonna say, shouldn't there be like some kind of secret over here? Standing right at the top of the stairs so I don't slide back strats. Oh! Forgot that these guys can shoot down. Oops. Alright, this next boss I had figured out a lot better when I was doing boss rush. I want that even though I have full health. Jump over him, he shoots like that, he comes over here, and then he's vulnerable. Now, if he goes to the left side, then he does like a Storm Eagle thing, where he, um, 
tries to blow you into some stuff. Like, he might do that right here. Yep. Like that. This one I don't like as much because afterward, I uh, can't seem to get as much damage in on him. I wonder if it always just depends on what side he's standing on after he shoots out the shards. It probably does. It's probably just that simple. Alright, so now... For this part, he does this. And then he comes in from the right like that. Then he blasts the sides, and then he blasts the middle. And we did it! And that part is exactly sort of the reason that I didn't like using the, um... The double tap to, to dash, because... It caused me to, like, dash into the attack. Now, I also like the non-double tap to to dash because I can just mash it. Alright, so I need to be using this charge a lot in this level. To deal with these idiots. Go. Do you think? Nah. Uh, I use the down key for dash. And you can just kind of mash it. Oh, I don't need a key to flex. Flexing is all I'm doing. Oh, jeez. Oh, do I even need to charge anymore? No! Since we picked up the, uh, the power, the power pickup. I guess I can use that here now. Oops. Have you guys ever heard of a book, an art book called Masquerade? It was very, very popular. It's like a coffee table art book. But it has a very interesting story behind it. Uh, which is part of the reason that it's like such a popular one. So there was some artist. The story is that there was there was an artist guy, I can't remember his name. Uh, who was approached to make an art book. But he didn't really like the idea of, like, a coffee table art book because he doesn't think that people really look at the pictures. They just kind of flip through it and go, oh, that's nice, oh, that's neat, you know. But they don't really look at it. So, what he did is he, uh... He got some kind of piece of jewelry. It was like a... 
some kind of golden hair uh, with some with some jewelry also involved. Shit, I could have double jumped and uh, and buried it in a secret location. And he made the art book, but he made the art book with a puzzle. Where the idea was that somewhere in the book, in the art book, the art are clues to where the where the hidden thing was buried. And his idea is that that would get people to really look at the artwork, you know? Because they wanted to find the clues, solve the mystery, and dig up this piece of treasure. Now... What's very interesting, from what I heard, to kind of... I mean, this is the abridged version, from what I understand, but... They're, uh, basically, for years, like, people would write in. They would write to the artist about their thoughts or their- what they think is the solution to the puzzle and all that. And apparently, for years, nobody even came close, no one was even on the right track. And the puzzle itself was, like, very convoluted. Part of the reason that it was so convoluted was that whoops was that the art book included like a story about a little boy who dropped the hair right he was the one who lost it or something shit and you would assume this was cat room by the way that i was raging at that one day and you would assume that you know that had something to do with the location but it didn't the clues were 100% purely visual in the art and had nothing to do with the story that was also being told throughout the book. Apparently, much later there were, you know, after a few years, there was like a pair of physics teachers or something that were working on it together that wrote in with the correct solution. However, um, however, they went to dig, and, uh, and they didn't find anything. But there was also another guy who rode in with the completely wrong, he rode in with the correct answer, but the, a completely wrong way to find the answer, and the way that he found the answer didn't even really make much sense. But he found the answer, and he went up and dug, and he did find it. And it was a big deal. He was in the paper and all that kind of stuff because because this had been going on for years, and he found it. And it was a very popular book, you know, so it was a big deal that somebody finally found the solution. But then it turned out... Oh, 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 the guy who found it, though, when he was in the paper and stuff, he was, like, very secretive. He, like, went in disguise, wearing, like, a mustache and a hat and stuff that, like, to conceal himself because he didn't, like, want attention about it or something. But then it turned out, much later, that, um... Well, okay. First of all... What the guy did with the hair was that he founded a video game company to create a game called Hair Razor that would recreate the masquerade puzzle in video game form. And so you could buy Hair Razor for these for old computer systems, you know, like Commodore 64 and and those, like, really old computer systems, right? And, um... Oops, I thought I was on a different part of this fight. Okay, she's gonna... 
gonna rain now. Uh, so you could buy, oops, this computer game to find puzzles. Uh, or find, uh, more clues to where the hair is, is now hidden. Because now it's somewhere else. But, they didn't just put the, the clues in a video game. What they did was they put it in a very overpriced video game. It was like way more than the, than the average game. Um, and also, they released it in like two games. Where originally... There we go. Originally it was gonna be like, you know, it caught... You know, the solution is in this game. But then... Uh, when they released it, it turned out that it was just the first half. And then they released another second half that was, uh, also, also very overpriced. And, uh, the game itself was not really much of a game at all. It was just, like, a screen that had some images on it, like, a hair some trees. It was just like a, an, an outside environment, you know? Some trees, a horizon, maybe a hair walks onto the screen. Um, and it all looks like shit, by the way. Like, even for the standards of graphics at that time, looks terrible. And was quite nonsensical as far as, um, yeah, in C64 graphics that were, like, really bad, too. Uh, and basically, nobody figured out the puzzle there, uh, for that one, and nobody bought the Hair Razor game, and the company just, that made it, founded by the guy who got the hair in the first place, just went out of business. Um... But then, later, it turned out that that guy, who again, like, you know, showed up in disguise to the, to the, uh, press event and stuff of, of, uh, about finding the hair and stuff, it turned out that he, he, uh, was like, somehow related to somebody who was close to the artist in the first place. I don't know if it was like, he was related, I think he was related to the artist's girlfriend or something. He was in a position where, where he already knew where the hair was. He didn't actually solve the puzzle, which made it kind of make sense that his solution didn't really make sense of, uh, of how he found it. And so, and that, that's really kind of the end of the story, is that, um, the, the guy who got it, it turned out that he kind of cheated to get it. He just already knew where it was. And that's probably the reason that he was all in disguise and stuff is so that the artist wouldn't recognize him and all that and he took the money from the hair well he took the hair and then put all of his money into trying to make fuck trying to god damn this fucking fr this frog just kicked the shit out of me i have one health left uh and he made a shitty video game that was really overpriced and went out of business. And then he sold the hair to some lady who still has it. Who, like, lives in Egypt or something. <laughs> What's up, Mega? Oh, no. Okay.
Ah. Man, that part's hard. Uh, all right. I actually kind of don't want this weapon, but let's see what Miriam gets. This weapon, huh? I guess that's all right. Can do that with it. Weapon's all right for this part. She's gonna jump too high and just jump into that thing. All right. Whoops. Again. Yeah. Man, Zangetsu sure is good when he gets all of his abilities. <laughs> Whip back. That room's really easy. I think this might have been the room that I figured out that I could charge hit in, and then it also happened to be the, um, the solution. I'm not sure though. I'm not actually positive that that was the room. All right, this this pixie needs to go. figured that out last time. <laughs> yeah. All right, we are almost there. Whoops. The makers of the new Hitman game should make do a Quantum Leap game. Is Quantum Leap a, a thing I've never heard of? As in like, not the concept, but the, but, uh, but like a game series? Just so long as it's not, uh, Quantum Break. This guy always hits me when he does his little jump like that. Is that what that game was called? The game with the TV show? Oh my gosh.
Whoops. Okay, switch. Ah. Uh. I always made fun of this boss for being the easiest. But on this mode, he does this one move right here where it's like, it's... It was pure luck that I dodged at that time because I don't know how to dodge it. So he's really getting me back. Scott Bakula, he was... I know he was in Star Trek. That's all I know is that he was in Star Trek at some point. He was somebody at some point. And I only know that because of Futurama. Way to kill the franchise, Bacula. Alright, here we go. Stage 8. Curse the moon. That was not his peak career role? Well, sounds like he did pretty well for himself. Ah! Whoops! He's the star of NCIS New Orleans. NCIS. Is that one of those like? I, I I shouldn't even say because I have no idea. It's that it, like it sounds like a CSI kind of thing. He was the star of Quantum Leap. Okay, so it was a show that I've never heard of. Gotcha. You know. Maybe one of these years I'll watch Star Trek, by the way. Navy Criminal Investigation Service. Okay. Damn. Okay, now CIS... Or CSI, I mean. And Law and Order, from what I've seen, are like fucking terrible. So, but I, I trust that NCIS is better. I don't know who that is. Okay, so we made it to this checkpoint. So I'm just gonna grab that one up. Miriam, you jumped too high for this part. Oh wow, she can actually grab it. Nice. And take those guys out. Oh man, Miriam's great. No, I don't know who Perry... Ma I mean, like... I'm sure if you gave me an example, that's not like a, that's not like a little thing that he's been in, maybe I'd know. I don't mind black and white, it's kind of cool. Oh, Miriam can't get up here fast enough, yeah. She jumps too slowly. Because her jumps are too high, so they take long. Alright, but here we go. Now the thing... The, uh... Uh... I'm still just ignoring those guys.
What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, now the the shards. I think it's it might be like stained glass shards or something. They um on that one screen they don't you don't even see them or hear them because you're just so far past them. Is this frog room? No, this is room with this guy. Maybe it would be wise to switch to Miriam and have her... Okay, this is frog room. Here we go. Time to either win or be very salty. Yeah! Okay, can I make this? Nice. Uh oh, though I don't know. I don't know how far it actually goes. Huh? Oh, apparently it goes pretty far. Uh, I think I just want. Well, neither of those really, but all right. Okay, let's get lucky on phase one, and then beat phase two in one try. Speaking of beating phase two in one try. Let's use Miriam for phase one. Uh-oh. Well, that couldn't have gone worse. Now it's time for the fun part of the boss. That phase, I don't like. Maybe I would like it once I figure out what all of the different combinations of how the shards are going to move are, but I don't know. There's too many. I can't quite... I, I'd have to, like, really investigate it. All right, so here we go. Yes yellows except right on this mode they like they like really come after you one two three four and get Oh, right. You can use the slash hit to do it like that. Two, three, four. Whoa. Oh, nice. Turning into her father. Here we go. Uh, oh, shit. Yes. Well, my mom's father was pretty fucking cool, so... You know... Got him! Her. It. The bad guy. Got him. Ooh, I got an achievement! Blade gleaming at sunrise. Oh. 
hordes of demons had been felled, and finally the mighty evil was destroyed. Thanks to their struggle, peace would return to the land. Oh yeah, it didn't even do like the, the bad guy came back ending. The heroes stood proudly in the sunlight. Soon, they would each go down their own paths. With the battle over, Miriam vanished as she wandered the land to find a new reason to live. Zangetsu had slain the archdemon, yet his heart still ached. In the midst of battle, he had felt uneasy. Gremory, the demon he had defeated, felt to him like little more than a shadow. Another fated night where Zangetsu's crimson blade would flash in the moonlight was all but certain. the end so there you go we got uh i got an achievement for beating it with only miriam uh m only miriam as an ally so maybe we got to do a zangetsu plus alfred playthrough and a zangetsu plus jebel playthrough Oh man, the the background graphics were done by Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> so I'm thinking about it. And if I take only Alfred, I'm not going to be able to get any of the power-ups. I'll be able to get the defense power-up, but not the... I don't think I'll be able to get the power power-up. Maybe you can drop off to the left and then use double jump to the right? That might work. But I'll definitely miss more of the power-ups than I did this time. This time, the only one that we had to miss was the... The one that you have to fly up to. Death's Gambit? No, I haven't. I'd be interested in it, though. I like the idea of a 2D Souls game. Whatever happened to Aider? It was like E-I-T-R? Whatever, let's find out. Okay, give me the, uh... Give me the disambag disambiguation. Maybe it was like, I think it was like E-I-T-R. It's not even on Wikipedia? Hmm. What's this death scam that you speak of? Oh, that's right. If you actually get search results on Wikipedia, I find it to be terrible. You have to have- it has to already have a page that it just finds right here. Alright, maybe Giant Bomb will have it. Alright, here we go. So, Aider... Is that- if that's how you say it. Not even a... 
whisper of a release date. This game looked really cool. It was like an isometric Souls game, basically. Isometric, pixel graphics. Um, and it looked Soulsy in its uh, gameplay. It seemed pretty cool. So yeah, as you can see this one, right, it's like asymmetric, looks very soulsy, uh, but it looks cool. But man, this is from January 2016. I wonder if this game is even still being made. But uh, I thought that, um, I thought that Salton Sanctuary looked bad so I mean I didn't play it I just thought it looked bad hey Josh uh, I did beat doom 2 yep and then we did another playthrough of bloodstained curse of the moon I mean circle of the no it is curse All right, so we've got some horse, horses, still on horse. There we go. Uh, no, I didn't look at the secret levels. What I did do was use no clip to look at the John Romero face after I beat it. We went. We did ID Clev to 30 and uh and no clipped in there. Hey. So yeah, um you know, I thought that Salt and Sanctuary looked like okay except I just hated the art style. This looks like a better art style. However, it does do the thing I hate, which is look at the pixels on this gravestone here. This gravestone is like sideways, but the pixels are actually turned. I, I hate that, but you know, a lot of games do it. Also, it's like, look at this text. It's just normal ass text. This symbol right here isn't pixely. So it's like, is it pixel art or not, you know? But hey, I gotta learn to appreciate that as its own thing. You know, games that use pixel art, but aren't 100% dedicated to it. I enjoy 100% dedication, though. Like what I was saying about Bloodstained, the thing about this game is that... Um... The actual resolution of the game is this. This is how big this game actually is, pixel by pixel. And then when you play it bigger, it's actually stretching it out. And and it makes it so that like this text actually scrolls by on the pixel grid instead of being smooth. And things don't like rotate and stuff. And if they did rotate, they would still be chunky pixels and not like the pixel art, the pixel art rotating, you know? Oh, I played a little bit of Downwell. See, like, as this thing rotates, it looks good. It's doing the thing where the pixels stay chunky. I like that. Why was that gravestone like that? Maybe it's a work maybe that was a work in progress kind of thing. You popped a balloon while inflating it. Oh man. All right. Well, Nicole and I are going to order pizza tonight. So I've got to go so I can order some pizza. But it was fun, we beat Doom 2, we played through Bloodstained again, in a way that promises two more playthroughs, because 
I want to play through with Alfred and with uh, Jeebel as my two uh, as my two mates. So that should be fun. But it was good. I'm sorry that I'm leaving just as you got here, Josh. But, uh, you know. Resident Evil 3 soon? I don't know how soon. I'm definitely going to play Resident Evil 3. Before I get to RE3, though, I'm going to play through RE2 again. Uh, doing a Claire A. Leon B. playthrough. Just to see what that's all about. So, there will be more RE2... Uh, 3 is Nemesis on PS1, yep, and so we are gonna play that at some point. But I'm not sure when exactly. Uh, other games that I really want to play very soon are Alundra, Celeste, um... I had another one. I gotta do New Game, I gotta do Extra Game on Kirby's Adventure. And play Kirby's Dreamland 2. I think there's other stuff too that I'm forgetting at the moment. But basically, there's lots of stuff I want to play. But RE3 is certainly one of them. Alright. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let's find a suitable host body. Obst is playing Secret of Mana? I've never played this game. Well, I played it on an emulator as a kid, and I didn't really like it very much compared to, uh... I was a Legend of Mana boy, and, um, I didn't really like Secret of Mana that much when I played it, but I'm sure I'd love it if I played it now. Anyway, I'm gonna host him. Thanks. Bye, everybody.